poor thing. It it, it has the willpower of a of just like a very strong individual, but it gives out. Oh, hi, we're live. Ah, hello. Uh, professional as always here at the Nat Thirties. Uh, we are definitely doing what we got to do. Uh, oh, yeah. Hi, everybody. We are. Um, you are joining us for a game of the Midnight World, uh, designed and uh, in you know, well, it's developed under development, but being written uh, as we speak, and should be released later this year. Uh, I am one of the co-creators of the game, uh, Gavin, <clears throat> um, and I have been kind of running off and on this Midnight Mondays. It's an extended public uh, uh, open play test slash uh, demo for people that might be interested in the game. And uh, we are joined by a uh, quite a few friends here who are going to help us out on tonight's mission, which is called Generation Midnight, one that I have written, a space-themed adventure. Uh, in which uh, the players are going to wake up uh, for their shift on a generation ship that's going far away from Earth. And uh, things are not going to be right, as uh, otherwise it wouldn't be a game, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tonight's uh, uh, triggers for those that are, uh, for those out there, are uh, we're going to be dealing with uh, mind control, uh, Body Horror, The Endless, Vast Void of Space, and, uh, what was the other one I said? Mind Control? No, we oh, had that. Body Horror, that was the one. No, you already uh, said that one, too. My bad. Oh, maybe I did. But either way, I said it twice. So there it is. <laughs> uh, we got out there for everybody, and just let you know, we have a uh, system where if somebody calls a yellow card, we are going to stop what we're doing, take a quick break, uh, kind of have a discussion, see what uh, got, you know, see what's going on that we can correct for somebody, because the goal here is not to freak people out to the point where they want to play. The goal is to uh, make sure everyone has a good time building a horror story together that we can all enjoy mutually. Uh, if someone calls red card, it's pretty much, uh, you know, we pull the plug uh, and decide what we want to do from there. It usually means they need to tap out for the day. Um, but uh, we also, on Midnight Mondays, do a thing for... Um, Donations. Uh, so any donations that you get uh, for this evening will end up going to a good cause. This co week's cause is going to be going to one of the many mutual aid requests coming uh, out of Texas in light of the uh, anti-trans bills. I know that there's been a lot of Supreme Court movement on this, but the uh, that does not change the atmosphere of things down there and the need for people's assistance in publicly fighting this, um, uh, well, fascist nonsense. So uh, that is where we'll be sending our money to for all donations this evening. Um, that's everything that is dubbed, or if you sub through this this uh, episode, if you donate, all that stuff will end up going to it. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to move over to my cast of characters here um, and allow them to introduce themselves. Um, and we are going to start first with uh, Celine Wells. You muted. Yeah. I, are we introducing players or characters? Uh, you introduce yourself uh, if you have anything that you would like to say, and then just kind of follow up with what your who your character is. Okay, so I go by Pixie. Uh, I will be playing Celine Wells, who is a navigationalist and by trade um, artist by preference. And I'm really excited for the space horror. All right. Uh, next up, Scythe. All right. I'm Scythe. I sometimes go by my real name, which is Marshall. Don't really care. Um, either one. And then I'm playing Diedrich, the one of the pilots of the team. He's cat. Hey everybody, it's me, mm, Cheese Cat. Tonight I'm going to be playing Donovan Vesperdine. He's a scrappy engineer into uh, biomech computers and a little hacking. On the side, you know. Yeah. Uh, 
and oh, just in case, <laughs> Eater. So hi, I'm uh, I'm gonna be playing Eddie Sourfist right here on the Midnight Mondays for my first time back after a while. Uh, Eddie Sourfist, gentle giant, big as a house, but uh, scared of a mouse. Poor guy is the cook of the ship, and we are going to find out if I can make it towards the end of this one without uh, running into the spooky oogie oogies in the middle of space. Well, there we go. Uh, yep, and that is everybody, and they have all built their characters, but I am about to get some information from them. Uh, I'll explain what I'm doing as I go along here. Um, Donovan, what is your challenge? My challenge is that I'm authority averse. I mean, Very I don't know cool. If that's really a challenge. Uh, it can be. Uh, given the situation, technically, Diedrich is the highest ranking, and you are in a military structure, so you might not like what Diedrich has to say. Uh, your trauma trigger? That would be looking into reflective surfaces. Oh, and you are in a space yeah. ship. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty metal. <laughs> I had a very yeah. frowny face when I wrote that. Yeah, that one's that one's gonna be fun. Um alrighty, Eddie. So uh for my challenge, I am a Twilight Beacon. For those of you that don't know, I just get a big red dot in my face that makes all the spooky things like to look at me. Yep, that's pretty pretty much uh if bad if there is a no other information and twilight things are going to happen to the group. Uh, uh, Eddie's the lightning rod for that, basically. It's going to slam into to Eddie first. Uh, what is your trauma trigger? My trauma trigger. Because of how scared of a mouse I am, very scared of swarms of vermin. Okay. Uh, swarms of vermin is very, very difficult to pull off in this one. Um, so... But, I mean, you know what? I think I can see what I can do there. I got some stuff that's going to be... Yeah, I got some stuff. Yeah, no. Oh. It's, 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 it's a challenge. Uh, you. It is a challenge. Every single time you roll a goofy trauma trigger in a setting that it's hard to do, it is, I make sure to try to put them in there. Celine, yep. your, cha okay. your challenge, please. Um, ability impairment. Um, intuition is locked at one permanently. She has incredibly bad self-esteem. There you go. She does not uh, trust any of her instincts, so intuition of one. All right, uh, that sounds that sounds solid. Actually, from a <clears throat> makes perfect sense. Trauma trigger. And that is flickering lights, which on a spaceship, which is mechanical in nature, with artificial light sources, uh, another one of those that. I'll let you know. Two of you got real good ones. Let's put it that yeah. way. <laughs> Looks like. <laughs> D, uh, Diedrich. I am an addict. <laughs> what is your source of addiction? I got, I like to party. It's cocaine, bro. Like whatever, whatever futuristic one you want to put on there. Uh, drugs. But it is just like street drugs, yeah. Yeah. The, nice. So, drugs. yeah. Basically, the <laughs> thing is, drugs. yeah. <laughs> you are gonna be in a world of hurt for that one. Uh, yeah. You actually, you would have to find. Well, I mean, there's drugs on the ship that may get you off on that but let's call it uppers okay yeah um don't do drugs kids trauma trigger <laughs> iconography that blasphemes my religion uh what religion are you we are gonna go with just your basic christian okay or space christian or whatever uh I'll let you decide where we go with that. Uh, yeah. So, Christ in space. Yeah. Oh, no. All right. So, for everybody here who is unaware, challenges are uh, things that your character innately has that hold them back in some way, shape, or form. They're things that you got to that you deal with. Uh, they tend to have mechanical uh, uh, things to them. Uh, so, an addict that is not able to. Uh, feed their addiction has a detriment when they are unable to do so. Uh, ability impairment locks an ability at one. It doesn't go any higher. Uh, 
there are ways to kind of mitigate it, of course, uh, and you certain dread powers could heal it in certain campaigns, but uh and then uh we said Twilight Beacon and we said a third ever. So all of these are kinda of have different uh Twilight Beacon, of course, the, the negative of that being you get wailed on first. And Authority Averse, uh, I can't remember the negative for that one. Like, what? Uh, in any scenario wherein I must follow commands by compulsion or choice, I gain a minute. Oh. So if you ask me nicely, I think we're cool. But if you command me, I'm eventually going to fall apart. Yeah, you're going to have a rough time there. Uh, and then trauma triggers are things that when they come in contact with them, they immediately add a minute to their midnight clock. Uh, the midnight clock is something that uh, a character has gained because at some point in their past they have hit a... They have come in contact with a dread being, sort of these uh, all-powerful uh, Eldritch-style entities across what's called the Midnight Veil. Vale. Uh, that have completely, they're just they're masters of their universe in some way, shape, or form and are trying to break into this one. They do so by splitting parts of themselves off and sending them in. Uh, they can't exist here in their full form currently. They're trying, they'd have to shape the, the place to be so, to do so. Uh, so no one really knows what, you, you. no one has any real clue what their goals are. They do. Um, you can kind of piece some stuff together, but they are. The way they think is beyond how human beings sort of think. And the first time you come in contact with one of those, uh, the situation creates a trauma trigger. Meantime, your character is in proximity to that trauma trigger. They will add, add a minute automatically to their clock. And uh, this will eventually add distress dice to their distress pool, which causes you to screw stuff up because you're distressed. Um, anybody with anxiety issues knows exactly what we're talking about. Anybody with depression issues knows, but anybody with mental issues of any sort knows exactly what we're talking about. It just builds up and you have to deal with it because you're at fucking work or something. And then, you know, uh, you pay for it eventually. And, uh, that is how this game is sort of, uh, mechanically, uh, does our horror is more the building sense of dread around it. Um, let's see. Uh, and that's pretty much also your uh, your first contact with a dread being dictates uh, that you have something called a dread manifestation. Everybody here should have one of those. It's like a power that you can use. <clears throat> um, it also adds minutes to your clock because you kind of don't believe that you're doing it like it's breaking you to do it mentally. So not everybody likes to. But in certain situations, it may save your life. So uh, without any further ado, we are going to begin here uh, on Generation Midnight. All right, so you pull your the first breath of air into your lungs as your mind comes awake. A voice comes alive in your head. Good morning, this is Caretaker, and you are being removed from your stasis cycle after 163 years, 7 months, and 243 days of the standard Earth calendar. Your scheduled shift was 48 years, 4 months, and 143 days ago. The Endeavor's internal sensors are undergoing some form of malfunction. Last sensor reports show all sections running at maximum efficiency at 63 years, 2 months, and 14 days ago. Your vital signs are showing green across the board. Heart rate and blood pressure are at acceptable levels to finish the stasis cycle. A medical technician will be with you shortly. Your eyes open, and above you, you see the transparent plexiglass, plexiglass screen of your pod covered with a thin layer of frost. The lights from the thawing bay are dim, but enough for you to see the ceiling above. As you lie on the pod, unable to move from the paralytics in your system, your mind wanders, thinking of what could could be wrong on the Endeavor. The medical staff caretaker mentioned never arrive, and eventually the drugs work their way out of your system, and you're able to move once again. So, uh, we're going to start with uh, Celine. So you are lying in a pod. You are completely naked. You're not wearing any clothes. You have, like, uh, each of you has uh, inputs in your wrist where, where like, connections go for medicine and things like that. Everybody has one more in uh, their neck area on either side. Uh, one side or the other, not both. Um, <clears throat> but uh, those are currently plugged in, and you're able to, like, now move enough to unplug yourself uh, someone, uh, this is what a technician would normally be doing, but after you regain enough control and haven't seen one. Is 
So, going to do that, presumably, since you're she's wide awake and not getting out of that state time soon. Mm -hmm. uh, is the pod sealed, or can she just, like, open up the door? Uh, yeah, the pods have a little latch on the inside that if you're inside and awake, you may just open them. And as soon as you touch the panel, it does and open up. So, going to look around now that now that, that the frosted glass is out of the way? Yeah, so uh, as uh, you look around, you uh, your eyes have not really been... Uh, uh, th there's never really bright light here because your eyes are not adjusting yet. It's a slow kind of uptake. And you see above that the lights are set to their dimmest setting as usual. And as you kind of like get out of your pod, each of the pods kind of like comes into its own little medical bay when it's pulled from uh, its stasis area. And there's a, a little, basically a little seat like right next to you where one of the, uh, uh, one of the medical technicians would have done their you know, processes and gotten you made sure everything was good and uh, all that stuff and as well as like a wheelchair they would have taken you in uh, and a little robe to put on you that robe is sitting there like a medical gown <clears throat> type thing I'm only gonna put that on I imagine the spaceship is cold uh yeah it is uh I mean it's always a little bit cold but it's you know in the 60-ish degrees it doesn't it feels like the last time you remember it so which is a good thing. It means that life support's still going. I'm gonna put the robe back on. Um, the other pods, can I see if there's people awake inside them? Right. So as you start moving out, we're gonna go to what everybody because all of you wake up at the same time. So hold there. <laughs> Diedrich, you're next. All right. As I'm probably trained for something to do this myself, I just quickly undo everything and get out. Okay. Um, all of I've, your all of your pot like areas are identical to what I explained to Celine. Yeah. So I just I, I grab the robe and tie my waist, not wanting to restrict my my arms. Okay. And, and uh, I go to head out. All right, uh, Donovan. Uh, yeah, just disconnect and climb out, and. Uh see who else like sounds like we're all kind of climbing out at the same time mm -hmm. so okay. yeah and Eddie boy howdy I am hungry that was the worst nap I've had in my life why are we waking up at the time we are I take the robe as a suggestion not <laughs> as an order and I just drape it over my shoulder for the moment <laughs> All right, where is everybody? Where is our food? Where is our clothes? Am I supposed to wear this? This isn't my size. This is an extra small robe. And, and I am you, anything but extra small. The three of you, this is what you hear, this tirade, as you're poking your head out of your little cubby area. <laughs> and you see the half, or the, the naked, basically, Eddie kind of walking into the larger area around you. Um... And uh, I'll go ahead and explain. You're in what's called the Thawing Bay. It's long and slightly curved, and there are 20 different stasis areas lacking, or <clears throat> lining the back wall where you've come from. Across from each is a small medical station for examination, and normally uh, med medical staff would assist you on the opposite side of the room, and they would hook in your biopods to uh, pump you full of, like, IV fluids and things that you need to, like, get out of to finish the thawing process. They are not here to do so, but yeah. And this is when you all notice that there are just three, like three other people here with you so far. Eddie, you. Why are you always so loud when you wake up? I don't know. We've been doing this for like. Soldier, I told you a hundred times <laughs> that robe is not optional. All right, Captain. And Eddie stretches the robe as far as it will allow. <laughs> and it's like, uh, well, mm. it's like, he seems like you had the right idea and I tied around my waist. <laughs> there you go. Eddie is technically not naked. Perfect. A loincloth situation. All right, Captain, awaiting orders. 
I I assume that I know what I'm doing because I've either been trained yeah, for you this or not, we've done this. Okay, one, you're not the captain. You have not been trained for this. The idea no, that but no like, one's here to wake up, but you do okay. know that... The, the general thing, rules and the general go, is, go plug yourself in and stuff. Yeah, the first thing that you have to do is get onto the machinery because uh, you have some time, but if you don't, eventually your muscles are going to start cramping up really badly. And uh, basically, yeah, you just came out of being frozen for a good long while. Okay. Uh, and you also see that each of the other pods, as you kind of walk out and look around, is just uh, there's lights on them, but they're not moving. Nobody else seems to be getting out. Well, I mean, I... gently like um, knock without saying anything. <laughs> just gonna gently knock on the windows of the nearest pods and, and see if there's any motion inside. Okay, uh, you do so, and, like, the dim light allows you to kind of see inside, um, and you're actually standing over the pod of the, uh, executive officer, the first officer of the ship, um, and you see very clearly on the, like, readout that everything's flatlined, um, completely. It would take a little finagling to figure out more, but, uh, he is dead. Uh, well... We seem to have a problem on our hands. And then uh, Eddie's going to see the rest of the pods and see if status quo, what's going on with all of them. Uh, just, yeah, as as you kind of start checking on the other pods, you'll see the same thing. Each of them is flatlined. Everybody is dead. Uh, the captain, the rest of the crew, um, the security, uh, the rest of the engineering team. <clears throat> uh the bioessentialist like doctors they have a bunch of scientists that make sure that the uh there's a uh, kind of a recycling uh internal food system for the ship to make it maintain let last as long and there are uh botanists and biologists and stuff to run that as well but everybody is dead except for the four, the four of you i've been plugged into the wall getting my banana bag yeah uh, These yep. people, we we have been working with them in previous ships, correct? Yeah, you 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 so know. We these know all these people who are like lying down. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, really quickly. Um, <clears throat> as uh, Donovan, as you were kind of going around doing this, it's very dim in here, but it's also still very sparkly clean. And uh, as you pop your head over the first of those pods you do see your reflection kind of pop back at you and you look very strange to yourself because you just popped out of cryogen so uh i'm gonna have you go ahead and add a minute there to your your thingy um and celine um the flickering lights on all the consoles with the darkness and the situation itself is causing some issues i need you to add a minute as well yeah that's very reasonable okay um Anyways, so uh, that is the situation you're in. Just uh, let you know the you know also that uh, the layout of the ship is that uh, you're in what's uh, you're in the front end of the whole craft itself, which is where all this stuff is kind of handled. Uh, the engineering department runs through like the back ends of the ship. It also uh, engineering also maintains like cryostasis pods and stuff like that for the um, colonists. <clears throat> um, the cockpit is sitting at the front of the ship, not terribly far from where you're at, but you are on, uh, it's like a stacked circular ring system, so you're on the bottom of those that accesses the crew cryogen stations, which is where you're at, and then as you go to the right, you'll go around into the med bay, uh, right facing out from your pods, you're going around to the med bay, and to the left facing out of your pods, you're going around to bioessentials, uh, which is the, it's like, uh, Water reclamation and uh, waste extraction and food production, uh, things like that. And then uh, each, and then there are there is a uh, there are staircases above you. The middle tier is like the living quarters area, so that's where your uh, the bunks are. That's where the uh, uh, the mess hall is, and that's where the wreck area is, and the very top of this circular thing is where the actual crew would be. So, like, those in engineering that are up in the front would be there. That's where the pilot would be, the navigation is, and all that stuff. Uh, 
after hooking up to whatever nutrient bag I need to get my body moving, I want to go get my clothes. Okay. I second that. So and go yeah. to the locker room. Yeah. So the locker room uh, is. Uh, okay, well, that's right. So the next step from this phasing, I just meant to mention this, sorry, uh, is you would end up usually going into the uh, uh, med bay, and that is where you would end up getting your uh, uh, your uniform, because that's what you wear uh, while you're on the ship, is a standard issue, like uniform that can be fitted with, uh, you know, uh, the like a space suit if you needed to, or, you know, the emergency, like, suits that are around the area, things of that nature. So, uh, you do know that they would be there, and that's the closest place where you're going to get a pair of clothes. That's where I'm going to go. All right. Hi. So, as you uh, walk on over to the... Uh, uh, to the Med Bay area, uh, you actually first come to what's like the control room area for this situation in between the two. Um, and you get to the door and you're able to like hit the button and it opens like normal. And you see laying on the ground is a dead crewman. He immediately goes just like his heart is already on the floor to because of the crew, like trying to process the information, wearing the thin suggestion of a lab coat around his waist while the clothes get to where they need to be, uh, and just without recognizing that it's a dead body, goes to the dead body. Are you okay, man? Hello? Please <laughs> say something. <laughs> All right. Uh, Yost is lying on the ground. He is pale blue. Uh, he is not moving. He's pa He's got a very pallid color to him. Uh, he does not sign, show really any signs of uh, breaking down or, you know, uh, anything of that nature. But he seems like he's been mummified almost. But uh, his body is just lying there. So long enough for rigor mortis, but not really... Yeah, long pretty much. Long enough to decay. Basically, like, his muscles are frozen where they're at. You'd, you'd have to do, like, a medical workup to figure anything more out. Um, right, but, like, you, know. you can't bend him. Yeah, he's very, very, like, stiff, stiff to the touch, touch okay. and stuff like that. But he's not showing any signs of, like, having been... having started the process of decay. Uh, after checking on him, he's the wrong color, the poor fellow. Oh, my God. Uh, What's wrong know? in this ship? And the tag on his vest says Yost. Y-E-O-S-T. That is Crewman Yost. Oh, dang it, it's Yost. We were supposed to trade shifts. I was best friends with his cousin's sister. Which would be his cousin, I guess. Just still, yeah. Uh, it's I put okay, him... Eddie. It's okay. No, it's not just okay. A, just <laughs> throw like... him in one of the pods. Once we get this all figured out, and I maybe I can get stuff back online and we can figure out what's going on, we can get some of the med team back up and see what we can do. I mean, you know, the whole cryo thing. He's all old, right? right? Uh, Eddie puts his fingers to, like, the bare skin around his face or neck. All right, and here's what you see. Like, Lo Yost is lying, like, completely on his back, uh, and he's wearing a gray jumpsuit uh, and the standard black grab boots, inter it, like, that everybody wears. Um, <clears throat> said sl his head's kind of, like, laying to the side. Um, it's got purple and black streaked hair covering it, his head, and as you kind of, like, are getting closer, you see sitting up underneath him, there's, like, a data pad. Uh, kind of like poking out from behind his shoulder as if it, he had fallen the top of it. And, uh, yeah. I'll go to grab that. Alright. So, uh, you pick up the data pad, and, um... And he's yeah, gonna it, take it the suggestion a... and move the pod. Start moving as the body to the, the, the pod. Okay. Just out of just general... 
respect. respect. <laughs> I'll be right uh, back. So we don't trip over him later. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Fair. He's so, a uh, cross, Donovan. You toss, toss him in the, uh, yeah, you toss him in the pod. And uh, you notice uh, you notice something in his back pocket as you kind of like toss him down. Uh, let's see what's in this back pocket. Uh, there are three stims, stimulant uh, shots that uh, basically they can be used to increase the maximum seconds you spend in a secret in a single round to twelve. Ah, well, I'm gonna take those. Oh, well, you won't be needing these, Joe. Mm-mm. And I put them in the pod. I put them in what it used to be my pod, and I just close it up. Uh, and who has? Uh, what are you doing with the Yoast info pad there? You... I'm just trying to go through it, logging in, see what's uh, going on. You cannot log thing. in. You do not have the login access to this data pad. Um, so you are going to need to like find a way to break into it. Uh, well, this shit's yeah. useless. That you have technology or some sort of form of larceny, you can try to break into it. Or if I you, do you not. Can try to, yeah. You can try to guess a password either way. Fuck it, let's guess. All right, so if you're trying to just do that, that's going to be a we're going to call it intuition plus. Um, oh, you're going to kill me here. <laughs> you never know. We're going to call it wit. Intuition plus wit. Uh, I knew that's where you were going. Larceny or technology, that's going to give it to you, but go ahead and roll. Yeah, no. Uh, two and a one. Nope, nothing on that. Yeah. <laughs> well, damn, it ain't password. All right, so uh, here you are standing in the uh, control room area of all of the dead uh, pods. You do know that this area was where you could probably get more information about those pods and things about them. This is where the this is an engineering thing as well. Like the part of the engineering crew would be here making sure the technical side of things went while the medical team was out there. Um, I just kind of get dressed because I'm not used to anything like that. Did you just throw the the data pad down, or? I mean, I kind of like haphazardly tossed it, but it's—I don't think it's broken. Okay. Donovan's gonna go pick it up. Ready. And I want to use my hacking aptitude with my technology. There you go. So. Is it still gonna be intuition and wit? Uh, we'll call that. Uh, you could be acumen and wit as well for you on this one. All right. It was intuition for Deidre because he had no clue what he was doing. Donovan, however, you use your brains on this because you know what you're doing. I see eights for Donovan in chat. Ooh, woohoo! All righty. So that was wait, acumen and wit. Yeah, and all your eights count as two successes. All the eights. You get his password, his social security, his IP For address. For a moment, you become Yoast. <laughs> <laughs> I got four successes. That is a phenomenal success. Congratulations. So you open up, moment, you become not only, Yoast. Not only do you pop open the info pad, uh, you're able to very quickly um, kind of break the, his encryption on his personal logs as well to see what's going on. So now the info pad you have can connect with all the ship, the ship's intranet, and connect with engineering systems. Uh, according to the pad, the initial thing you see, the ship has experienced numerous mechanical failures, up to and including life support. Though you're breathing fine, the temperature is correct, so that seems wrong in your engineering brain. Um, the pad is also showing a massive hole breach directly above you, which pretty much says that there's something wrong with the sensors. Um, 
his uh and as you kind of also are doing that you can scroll through you know, his personal logs and they identify him as a member of crew six on his third 10 year shift sorry i meant, I meant to say 10 year shifts not one year shifts earlier and that was my bad on his third 10 year shift beginning 163 years ago he has a wife and two children in cryo and keeps an array of personal logs to them uh the most his most recent or latest entries are disjointed and uh um, his last, the last log that he had in him is him talking about a fist fight that had broken out in the mess hall. Uh, and then as he's talking, the ship's alarms, alarms go off. Uh, the next four entries dated 59 years ago are of him rambling about seeing true emptiness and not, and, and having to not fall asleep. Talking about he can't fall asleep. Huh. All right, so here's this long and short. Uh, I think the sensors are screwed. Uh, I'm going to take a look and also see when the last time the code was rewritten to look for any kind of virus. You know, sometimes people get bored. Um, Because, yeah, it's saying that there's a massive hole breach right above us, and... Here we are. Uh, yeah. So that's that on that. Um, but it seems that about 59 years ago, there was uh, some kind of incident. And then things just go completely sideways from there. I'm not real sure, but something about... Not being able to sleep, can't sleep, don't want to sleep, and seeing true emptiness. Uh, but yeah, I'll uh, I'll keep this around. Yeah, that info pad you can now use to just access uh, panels I'm around in. the ship. Yeah, you've got things like that, so it gives you kind of your tool that you need. Uh, they're sort of like everybody has a data pad. Yours would be probably uh, amongst your belongings that are usually brought up out of storage when you're rotated. <clears throat> um, uh, what they normally do is go ahead and place the. Uh, uh, they place them in like the. Uh, they bring up the pallet of stuff to, uh, the what do they call it? The bunk area, and then you'll grab your shit and take it to your um, your billet. Yeah. So. So yeah. Um. Are there parts of the spaceship where we can, like a porthole, where we can see out out into the, to the space? Where you're at, no. You know that there are some on the infirmary side. Uh, once you get into the infirmary, which is the next door from here. <clears throat> Well, the, the void, I'm not 100% sure it's correct, but could it be referring to the space outside the ship? Has something changed since the last time we were awake? It... I mean, and I'd look at the back behind us. I'm pretty sure something did. Like, if the sensors are all wrong and there's a hull breach, it's like Donovan says, we wouldn't be here. So, according to the to the story you just told us, something went m just more than sideways. It flipped three times over, and now here we are. Everybody's dead. We're, people are just lying down on the floor. I'm pretty sure we're alone. It's like, and uh, g give me a second. I think we're alone now. And I, I just take a very eddy, like, breath in. <gasps> Hello! And I just yell very loudly off into the wild blue yonder. Hello! Hello! And my voice echoes through the chamber in a pitiful attempt to solicit any type of answer, and I and hold my ear out. Oddly, not too pitiful is each of you hear from all around you a myriad of voices that you cannot understand. They oh, don't no. seem to be coming from any direction. Uh, they come across to you as... Uh, 
languages. Some of them you understand, and some of them you've never even dreamed of before. Um, and uh, different emotions are conveyed across this whatever it is as well. Uh, as well, almost like some sort of uh, like you're being like present. There's a presence of some emotional and sentient forces like all around you. Um, you actually start to feel emotions that you don't recognize. You know their emotions. They come from the same kind of place, but you don't know what they are, uh, as if they are non-human in origin. Um, and after a few moments of, of this, uh, every one of you is going to add a minute, or actually, you're gonna make a uh, you're gonna make a keep it together check for this one. Uh, my favorite. That I is, remember. <laughs> that is a uh, yeah. That is a uh, resilience plus metal. Ah, with my rough resilience, a one. <clears throat> All right. Remember, if you have uh, those of you who have already added had a minute added, have a D four on your die. Did you start okay. with one minute? Okay. Uh, are are both tra are both traits um D D six or they well, uh, one for of them a is keep it together check? You always have a D eight on your on your secondary. This is something that uh, since you're touched, you're you, you kind of get a D eight on this one. Okay. Instant regret, just like instant regret, mind you, about the I shout. Two twos and, um, a this entire time, I'm just staring, disasters. staring at Eddie. I'm sorry. With with the I look on my face of just what have you done? Oh wait, I have to roll for the Carol. Yeah, that was a one. Never mind. One Nexus ass. One Nexus one. Oh thank God. One Nexus yeah. ass is all you need. Eight, two, and five. Then you're good. Two successes. You're all able to kind of like keep it together in that moment. This, this, uh, you are almost overwhelmed, but after the voices kind of recede, you each kind of like can give each other a moment and look at each other like, what the fuck did we all just hear that? So we all just stare at Eddie and go, what the hell? <laughs> I'd like to point out that I didn't mean for whatever that horrible Christmas carol was. But now that it happened, I'd like to point out that I might need a new robe. <laughs> hey, just put your damn clothes on. They're right there. And he proceeds and to put There's a whole locker full of them. Hang on, hang on. I know where yours is. And I go to a separate locker and I just pull out this like giant. <laughs> There it is. Like it's like I, folded like six times. Like, thank you. Uh, and I put on the the new suit and uh, just zip up. I'll be quiet now. All right. So uh, you're in the control room area, um, and grabbing. Uh, yeah, you're grabbing some of the stuff out of the lockers there. So what do you do next? Other now than the uniforms. Is there any other supplies we find in the lockers? Um, make a... We'll call it an intuition plus vigilance. Uh, this can be <laughs> investigation. As a... Okay, as an, okay. As intuition plus vigilance. Um, okay. I got one, one six. Oh, I have to rough, rough doom. You're just dressed up. Uh, I got a one again. Okay. Uh, complicated success. Okay, complicated success. Okay, so <laughs> complicated success. Uh, you are searching through, and you don't find anything, like, supply-wise that you can uh, you can see. However, uh, you do end up uh, cracking open one of the... Over by, like, one of the stations, there's a small, like, lockbox. Or not a lockbox, but a drawer that you end up opening. And inside, you find another info pad that you can use. However, it is, like, um, it's as it gets to, like, they activate when they you, you look at them. And as it does, it starts to flash and blink and come to, and it startles you. And you add another minute point. Oh, we're in the same scene. Roll a keep it together check for this one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that was one six. One six, um, if the doom die finally 
for only rolled a three, so I still get one net success for that. Okay, you're able to like not take too much out of it on this one, but uh, you do have another info pad to play with. I scramble for drugs because we're obviously in med bay, right? No, you're actually not in the med bay yet. You're Damn in it. the you're in the control room that is the engineering. Bay? It's the engineering room that like does the okay. stuff for 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 med Never bay. And, uh, yeah, you're about to go into the med bay. Okay, I'll I'll save that then. I'll put yeah, that in the back pocket. <laughs> mm-hmm. Got it. So who's going into the med bay first? I guess I'll go into med bay first. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. All right. So uh, you were the first to open the door into Med Bay. Uh, here you see, um, you know that the Med Bay is uh, as you come into it from this side. There's like an intake area uh, with like a little like a nurses station for somebody that is keeping records and talking. It's almost like a triage area. Mm-hmm. It's all kind of like together. And then after you go from there, you go into a larger diagnostic area with a couple of. Uh, like open diagnostic beds, and then you have uh, different rooms on your left. You have surgery, or uh, you have sur- the surgical area. You have a uh, uh, what are they called? Imaging area as well, like in rooms uh, off to. I'm sorry, not left, off to the right, because you're on a curvature thing. So all the stuff is on the interior of the circle. The left is to the exterior of the ship. And on the left, you have a giant bank of, like, windows that are supposed to, usually showing, like, an array of stars. However, they are entirely black, as if someone has painted over top of them. There is no light source at all coming through. And for the first moment since, uh... Yeah, I mean, for the first moment since you've been here, you, you, you've you never seen this looking out of the window. The idea of ne- never seeing anything. Like someone turned the lights off out there. All oh, right, then. <clears throat> That's disconcerting. I'm sorry, Eddie. Do you know that word? <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you know how to spell sassafras? You got me there. Uh, Thank you kindly. But uh, as you kind of look around the infirmary, you also see that this place has been kind of torn to shreds. Uh, mm-hmm. There are... Uh, it, it looks like every drawer has been opened and rummaged through. Um, that there's a couple of dead bodies on the floor here as well. Again, they look like they just sort of laid down. Um, there is a nurse that is actually like, uh, leaning, like laying down on one of the beds and it looks like she had pulled like a blanket over and just went to sleep. Uh, And she's still there, uh, not moving, but they all have the same pallid sort of look to their skin and are definitely in rigor mortis as well. Are there any other blankets about? Um, yeah, you can find other supplies and blankets as you look around. Okay, uh, yeah, I think, I think she wants to, I'm going to cover the bodies that are there. Okay. That way it's easier to focus on the situation that isn't just dead friends. Uh, Donovan, the light in here is a lot brighter, uh, hence there's a much... You're seeing basically a reflection of yourself off the blackness outside. I need you to make it keep it together, please. All right. <clears throat> uh, all right. So, what is everybody doing now? Diedrich, you're looking for drugs, yes. I believe. So yes, I'm gonna I need am. you. I'm gonna need you to make an intuition plus vigilance check. Okay. Um, you can if you have medicine, it would apply here. If you had investigation, it would apply here. Okay, so I, I almost so. forgot to mention, uh, and I pull out the, the the stim packs that I got from Yost. Uh, Yost had these on him, and you know, seeing as the health situation on the ship isn't improving, I figured we might need these, and I put them on one of the tables, right, okay. right there. I don't know how many there are. You said three. Three. And there's four of us. Nah, nah. I'd, don't particularly like jabbing myself with needles. So, like, if y'all want to take these. I got two successes, by the way. Okay. So, uh, Diedrich, you are searching around. You immediately, like, you've been in the infirmary before. So you immediately like, go, I know where the pharmacy is. You immediately go right. back to where the pharmacy lockup is, and you see that the door has been torn off of its hinge. Like, it's been broken open. 
It's just still laying open. Everything in there is bis- discarded, and what everybody has been picking up seems to be stimulants. Um, the all the sim packs that you you know has been regularly used in order to keep people awake. Mm-hmm. Uh, they haven't been replenished. Um, you know that in bio necessities, they they actually can create a lot of these drugs, and that should have been happening, but it isn't like it's been picking up. You find the usual stuff as well, gauze and and things like that. It doesn't seem they were here looking for. Medical uh, supplies. Medical supplies. They were looking specifically for uh, stimulants to uh, you, and you uh, you even find like the other side of good drugs, you know, but no stimulants at all. So so nothing for uppers. Yeah, uh, not in this room. Yeah. Okay. Um, however, this is about when you hear Eddie talk about I found these, and then you can yeah, I turn around and grab one. Uh, but as you turn around, uh, you notice on the wall right in front of you it looks like something has been scrawled there something very odd um it immediately looks to you like some sort of uh like satanic imagery I'd like you to add a minute to your thing and uh you can actually see that it seems to have been written in um it's like carved into the side of this uh like medical box, like just dug in there with something. I gotta open that medical box. Uh, this medical box used to be a medical box for stimulants, right? This is what used to be in here. It's what they kept the like little shot things that they would give you. Mm-hmm. Um, but they are not uh, in here now. You're not really sure what created the scratch marks on this or who did it, but. Uh, yeah. I got one success to keep it together. Okay. Okay. You're good to go then. Donovan, what are you doing while this is going on? Um gonna go back out to uh the engineering portion of the med bay area and see if there's anything else to see. To figure out, so you're. I'm gonna have you do an intuition plus vigilance with your technology. Is you're basically looking up records and trying to figure out what you can piece together here. Uh, this is not a hacking role uh, yet, yeah. but it's it could be depending. Uh, Celine, what are you doing? Oh, you're covering all the bodies. Yeah, and... cover, covering the bodies with blankets. Um, when when that is done. Uh, like, just taking out that pad and trying to see if she can, like, pull up any readings that would make sense of the situation. Uh, okay, uh, you're not really uh, well-versed in medical technology. Uh, you're trying to pull up readings. You see that, like, uh, these machines have been used. I mean, you're able to, like, access basic stuff, and what you can puzzle together is they've been used, they were used at some point, but none of these people are alive. Uh, one of them is actually hooked up to the bed for the bio scanners, and it's showing a complete flat line. The one hooked up to the bio scanners is also gripping something very tightly in their right hand. And I see what that is. You may try. Yes. You may try. The scariest words uh, in a tabletop. Yeah, I mean that's creepy. Um, I love it, but just tell me what the roll. <laughs> Uh, you basically are trying to open the hand here. Uh, it is it is completely just sh- shut, like seized shut with rigor mortis. So it's going to take strength. Um, you're going to have to roll a strength plus toughness check. Athletics would come in handy here. Medical would come in handy here. Like medicine would come in handy here. Uh, this is just going to be a... <laughs> three dice and one uh, distress die. Oh, okay. I actually got a success on that. Okay, uh, the success you got on that is you're able to, like, pry two of the fingers, like, up just enough to grab the, oh, okay. the small chain that you see, and you pull it out. Um, as you pull it out, the edges of this thing actually slice open the hand, and you see blood start to trickle out of the hand, uh, which also feels odd. It, you, for someone that's this that's dead like this, it starts to kind of pull a little bit on the floor. But what you're holding in your hand is a strange-looking symbol. It's, uh, uh, like, on kind of a pendant-type thing. It is, 
uh, kind of a rounded knotwork of a bunch of concentric circles, uh, and all of them are completely pl pitch black, uh, the exception of the center circle, which is a like, little circle of white. What you got there, Celine? I... I don't know. And I, I look at the thing, it's like... Well, I don't know what happened when things started going belly up, but... This can't be no coincidence. I got Hello, two Cobra. successes. Okay. okay. So, Donovan. Uh, your two successes are going to show uh, some more information as to what went down. Uh, you kind of like jump into different engineering logs and the things that people have to keep. And it looks like somewhere around uh, roughly 59 years ago, there was a hole breach directly above you. That is what you're finding in engineering, the sensor log logs for that time back. So it seems that whatever's going on is, is like there. But what you figure out is that caretaker, the like, the AI that helps you come out of your, your stasis thing uh, is not allowed to wake people up if there's a hole breach. But there's not a hole breach. So the sensors are what probably kept you from being woken up when you were supposed to be woken up. The sensors reading a hole breach means that they're not going to wake you up. That's how Caretaker works. It would kill you. Um, so uh, going further into... You get two successes... Going further into uh, looking at Caretaker, Caretaker's able to kick back to you, like, uh, the status of every single pod on the ship. 100% of them are showing deceased. This is a mm. entire... This is uh, pretty much kicking back a mission failure. And the four of you are the only living people on this ship that you can tell. Does it show how long they've been deceased? Um, yes, in fact, they died... Fifty-nine years ago, same time as Yost. Like the same time as around the end of Yost's like logs. Uh, so. Yeah. Something happened. Infected the ship. Somehow we. Four of us survived. Huh. Wait, you mean to tell me, like, everyone is dead dead? Oh, I didn't see you guys come back in here. Um, yeah. Oh, I I'm sorry, I wasn't aware. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's what the, that's what the logs, that's what Caretaker says. And, uh, yeah, it all lines up with Yost's personal logs that he was keeping for his family. I didn't figure we needed to know all that, but uh... Yeah, I have a theory. Something hit the ship. Infected the ship. But there's some commonality that we have that kept us from being infected. Wait, and you're hmm. saying that if something infected people, and that's what turned them into that, like, whatever happened to them points at the bodies on the floor. What well, if they're still the infectious? Ship itself, the ship itself, as well, because the software is giving me weird readings. There is no freaking hole above us. So, what you're sitting in now, as an engineer, you know that you can only get so much information from this level of it. However, the engineering controls in the cockpit, in the, like, main area, um, they have access to everything on the ship. You may may find some other information from there. Right now, you also know that it's possible that it's just this floor that's, you know, um, just this station that's causing, that's malfunctioning, that's caused the issue. Um, you can't get a reading of anything on any other level of the ship. With this, you can't get internal life signs. You can't see, uh, well, anything until you physically go check it out. At least not from this terminal. Yeah, I need to get to a better terminal to get into the full systems and do systems diagnostics. 
So I either get. I suppose we should go to engineering to then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's Ever, do it then. Whatever happened then, it it seemed to have put people to sleep. But if they've been dead for sixty years, why are they? They're still bleeding. I wouldn't touch that blood, considering it infectious and all the life. In fact, hey, Eddie's gonna look for a mask. <laughs> uh, there are, I mean, there are in fact masks uh, that you can wear. Uh, Great. The, 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 <laughs> he's got an N95. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like a suit. It's like a suit thing. Like so your suit has attached oh, okay. to like okay. things like medical masks, biohazard masks, like radiation shielding, and all that stuff. Like. That's part of the standard issue uniform you wear. Oh, okay. Never mind. I I, I thought it was just like a uh, like a jumpsuit kind of deal. It's it's a jumpsuit, but it's like a, a functional one that has connections for to add other suits like exosuits or like connect. Uh, so like Proto there's an Iron Man suit. Yeah, I mean you're way far in the future, so we're talking about the ability to pull out a. Uh, because uh, if there's a fire, there's an emergency fire suits that you can like throw over yourself and stuff like that. But it, it's yeah to connect a mask and things like that. You can do that. Wonderful. I, I choose to do that, and yeah. uh, uh, internalizing the, the the grief and mass death that just happened around us. But the you know instinct to survive kicking in. All uh, right. So what's the plan here, fam? Diedrich, as you're walking back towards this conversation, you do see those three stems uh, sitting on the table that Eddie found. I go to grab one, but end up grabbing all three if nobody's paying attention. No one, everybody's paying attention to this conversation. So. All right, I grab all three. Okay. Character point. Are you using one now? Mm -hmm. uh, you... Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, this would this would help your yeah. So you are injecting yourself with the stem. You pop them into your little bio node that's in your wrist, and hit. Um, it's uh, you're not gonna get the benefit from it because you're using it as a, you know, joy drug. Then like if you wanted else. to spend twelve seconds right now, you could, but you don't need to. Yeah. Um, but that's gonna give you basic. You're good for the rest of this uh scene. Pretty okay. much. Um. But as you're uh, walking in, you're kind of standing in the doorway while they're having this conversation, and uh, you you get that sense of like euphoria through you that you're kind of like riding out, and then you hear from behind you movement, and as you turn around, you see uh, the farthest uh, doctor, the one that had uh, Celine had picked something out of their hand, sits up and reaches over and starts wrapping her cut hand with gauze. And she looks directly at you and says, "Why are you awake? Why are all of you, you here? All of you hear this happen in this other room and can turn around now." I immediately scream, "Why are you awake? What the fuck?" I've always been. Well, I'm awake to uh, to ask for you to come and join us. Join us to do what? Uh, to experience euphoria. To experience true oneness with the universe. Just close your eyes and accept it. How are you awake? She just kind of skips over like she wasn't talking before and asks again. Y'all, yeah, I'm about ready... The, you know, fight or flight is a very powerful thing, and either we fight or the, 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 the this lamp is gonna take flight straight right to her. <laughs> Man's got props. <laughs> it's got sharp and pointy pencils. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to move to, move closer to the now animated mummy. <laughs> Brave. She stands up, uh, as you've kind of walked towards her and she has, uh, you see that she's wrapped her hand 
with the same with what looks like medical skill like even when she wasn't quick she like wrapped it with gauze and she uh like attached it down like it was supposed to be and got it on there really good um and she uh she kind of like reaches up for her neck for a moment and then just sort of shakes her head and says um well actually she she says the same thing she's like uh uh, I can make a bed for you if you wish to go to sleep and join us. Would you make a bed on the other corner of the ship? Like, the, 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 not the, not the corner next to the pool, the corner, like, way past the pool. <laughs> like, at the very end of the ship. I'm sure that many people were sleeping in their bunks when they decided to join. If you would prefer to go to, uh, the crew quarters and sleep there that I'm sure will be fine but there's nothing for you here there's only something for you out there and she gestures towards the darkness at the window well why don't you go on ahead and we'll join you in about five minutes I must see that you fall asleep so that I may return it will be I look easier at, I look at the gang hungry we need to we need to eat before we go take a nap, you know. We just got up. Got to stretch my legs a little bit. Like, uh, like Eddie is I internally panicking. Like, there have been multiple deaths. We are on a creepy spaceship, and now suddenly a space blue lady doctor is talking to us after we were pretty sure she's dead, and it's taking everything I have to not enter into a panic, coping with the situation. As humorous as it may sound, but I am ready to run. Uh, so she she walks towards you, and as she gives each of you like a long look, and you notice as she's looking at you, just her eyes seem to completely go black entirely, just for a moment. I don't want to look. I look away. And then uh, they I'll come back there. around, and she sort of uh, like says. <clears throat> It seems that you belong to someone else, or to another. Well, that will not do. I'm sorry? Oh, I bet no. this has to do with my hypothesis. No, I, uh... I am oh. sorry. Uh, you must... you must go wait, to wait, sleep wait. now. Wait, and she no, reaches no. down and picks up a scalpel. I got a question. I got a question for you, lady. Uh, ah. She she immediately lunges directly at Eddie, stabbing at his face with a scalpel. Ooh, Please roll initiative. Can... <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, really quickly, everybody, it is ten thirty before we start the combat. Uh, uh, this is kind of our halfway point, so I would like to take a quick break and come back, everybody. We take a fifteen minute but quick bio and cool down moment here before we get into uh sleepy space zombie combat like uh, sleepy, sleepy space, space combat. zombie combat mm -hmm. like she offered to make a bed and now she's like no but i won't it's like listen sorry is this a far cry dlc things have changed <laughs> <laughs> i've never played far cry so i don't want to tell you oh god Hey, we're back, everybody. Hi. Uh, Hello. Hello, everyone. Roll here. Hey. Um, and where you just left us, uh, they're getting about to get stabbed in the face by a sleepy zombie. So. Ah, yes. Um, <laughs> My <me> favorite. Uh... <clears throat> Eater, or, uh, sorry, Eddie, if you could go ahead and roll a, uh, a dodge check, that'd be a coordination plus reaction. Uh, I'd have, love to. If you have hand-to-hand -hand or weaponry, you can increase those. I do not. But before I do roll these things for you, I do believe we were in the process of rolling initiative? Uh, no, this is the first thing that's going to happen. And then okay. Gonna happen. So you told me coordination and, I'm sorry? And uh, reaction. Coordination and reaction. So that's two of these. And one of these. That is a singular success. 
they get a singular success, so ties go to the attacker. Ah. They hit you for basically one damage. You kind of dodge out of the way a little bit. The scalpel hits part of your face and kind of gets a good cut across there. You take one damage. Now everybody roll initiative. That is, uh, your initiative is, uh, not coordination plus reaction. It is intuition plus vigilance. On the character sheet, mm -hmm. which makes it easy to keep track of. Yeah, I know. Mind. It's just it's just wrong on the character sheet right now. Wait, oh, it isn't? Oh, oh it's different. It's yeah, it's coordination not reaction was the old way. It's it, Oh, wait, I'm looking at the old one. Ha, 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 you're okay, right. So it, it is, is intuition right. and vigilance, because I, I rolled that. like intuition and vigilance. You are correct. Uh, so, my bad. <laughs> Did we add these up, or did we just take the successes again? The successes. So uh. it's always new successes. So <laughs> we will keep with the shots nine. I count. That's what yeah. I did. Okay. All right. Did uh, anyone get a four or up? Three or up? Right here. Or three. Uh, three. Okay, that's Donovan. A two. That is Diedrich. One. Eddie, zero. Negative one. Oh, I got a one. You got a one. Oh. All right. And we are starting this uh, little combat here. So, Donovan, uh, you see this uh, happen. And uh, her slice at the face of Eddie. And you are the first... Or wait, I'm sorry. I... Uh, you all see this happen, and in reverse order here, Selena. What is your, what action would you like to take in response? Okay. Um, can perf would performance? Um, would I be able? To, I know there's there's the blankets. Would I be able to like kind of like loop it over her head so she can't see anymore? Uh, that's sort of a improvised weaponry thing so yeah you can do something like that so that is going to be a we're going to call that a coordination plus manipulation role for that and coordination? it's yes. going to be an you'd need like weaponry or some sort of thing that you could argue makes sense for this but uh roll those and hold on to them for me eddie what are you doing going to do what i do best and I'm going to... Well, that's cooking, so no. I'm going to tackle her. Just like full-on body tackle. This is going to be a strength plus toughness roll. Uh, and that's going to be with athletics or hand-to-hand. -hand. I don't have those this time around. Oh, yeah. Fun fact, well, yes, sour fist is because I can make sourdough with just one fist. The nurse what? is... Uh, the nurse is going to attempt to stab you again, uh, Eddie. <laughs> Diedrich, what are you doing? I'm going to look around for a weapon. All right, I want you to make a intuition. Or anything I can use as a weapon. Call it intuition plus vigilance on that. Um, to, to find a weapon. And Donovan. All right. Okay, so I am going to, as I'm seeing a swingy slice, having uh, nicked my friend here, I am going to uh, an attack. Yeah, I'm going to just punch her in the face. Alright, that's a strength plus toughness. I also would like to invoke my uh, my ability here. Okay. Of, uh, pull it back up because I was just looking at it. Reflexive cognition. So when I roll my attack, but before they roll their reaction. I've announced they may not apply 
aptitude upgrades to their skill dice in defending against me for this attack. Okay. There you go. Then that one happens. So go ahead and roll your strength. Uh, add your minute. And then you're going to roll your strength plus toughness check with hand to hand as the aptitude here. Two. Uh, then they are, well, they're in the middle of, like, moving kind of erratically. You punch, and your punch seems good, but it sort of glances off the back of their head. Uh, you deal, like, a damage to her. Her head kind of pops to the side. Um, as Diedrich, uh, what did you get? Two. Uh, Diedrich, you were able to look around, and you pretty quickly find a, um, well, let's see, something... Medical chainsaw. Hand. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I'm, I, there's a name for a thing that's in my head that's not coming out of, that's not making it to my mouth. Just uh, describe. It is a. Uh, what is it used for? It's like a. It, it's it's a heavy. It's a mallet type thing, but it's uh, it, oh. it it. It's a bone really mallet. A... Yeah, it's just bigger than that. Um, is it for like cracking chests? It's not. It's not a medical device. It's like a. a oh. Basically, you're. Able... No, there's like a because uh, you're actually near the engineering room, so it's like oh, a tool. Okay. It's like a tool thing that you're able to like grab out of the one of the things here. So. Uh... Cool. Well, let's just call it a club right now until I remember the name of it. But basically, it's okay. like let's call oh it's let's call it an Omni tool. That's what I'll call it in this. But basically, it's okay. this kind of like long, heavy thing that you can uh, clunk them on the head with if you would like. So you know that to. in your hand, it is a you'll need a weaponry attack to use it, but it does a ah. a it does a damage, and it stuns uh, it stuns if you get four or more. Nice. Okay. Uh, the nurse is stabbing uh, upwards at Eddie as Eddie is diving towards the nurse. Before <laughs> you, uh, what you call it? I am going to use my ability because I have to do it when it targets me, but before they roll. Coronal Flash. Uh, when I use Coronal Flash, uh, they are supposed to make their roll with. Uh, I have put this down here. The attacker may not use aptitudes to upgrade skill dice for the next combat action. Yep, you got it. Uh, they got a two. So and coordination I... plus reaction on your dodge, please. Coordination, reaction plus my dodge. That is... I just rolled it. It is these three. You get three? I have one. No, just one success again. All right. So uh, what is your grapple check? Uh, that is my toughness and strength. So that's these... That is... Please give me... Uh, can I spend <laughs> seconds? Because I yeah. didn't get Always. a single one. Yes. Alright. Yes. Uh, how many seconds is it for two new dice? Uh, two... Uh, you One second re-rolls the dice, two seconds adds a d8 to your roll, and six seconds it, uh, will wipe out all of your distress die. I'll take six seconds to add a d8 then. Please... Six. Six seconds would add three d8. Oh, well then, that's all. Let's yeah. go. Go big or go home, right? Yeah. Here you go. And that is two successes out of those three d8s. I call it a worthy investment. All right. So uh, you take a scalpel, kind of like to the side into the meat of your your gut, as you end up successfully like wrapping your arms around this nurse. Uh, Actually, no, this was a doctor. I shouldn't say nurse. She, I am not going to... Oh, I took a damage again, right? Uh, you took... Uh, what'd you get, a one? You took two damage. <clears throat> two damage, so that puts me You take three. two damage from that, but you do have her grappled, meaning she is restrained currently. She's unable to move from this spot. Uh, and you can... 
and she can try to break that. Uh, she can basically not really attack anyone but you. <laughs> At the Eddie th has that's an period. auto success for next time. Okay. Hey! And Selena, what'd you get on your roll? Two. Uh, Two successes. Okay, so you grab one of the blankets and you're trying to wrap it around her headpiece. <laughs> However, with all the like punching and stuff, you're just it, it completely like slips off as you you go forward. She's uh, she slips through it without much issue, and we are back to what are you doing now, Selena? <laughs> that doesn't work. But she's on the floor in my gentle embrace now, if you want to call it that. Oh, you yeah, because you you tackled her, so you're on the ground like kind of. Can half I turn on top the table? Can I um turn the table onto her? Uh, the or tables are secured. Down? Yeah, the tables are secured to the ground because it's a spaceship. So. Okay. Um. I, I guess we could do this a general um kind of like, bonk on the head kind of deal. With <laughs> Since, what? Uh, she is trying to hurt all of us. <laughs> what are you bonking her on the head with? Uh. Is, is there, like, uh, the kind of metal shade that holds surgical equipment? Uh, yeah, sort of. There, there's something like that, that that's at hand. Everything's okay. kind of held down magnetically over there. There's, like, a small magnetic kind of th tray that they set stuff on top of so it doesn't go flying in case there's, you know, space turbulence. <laughs> space. Fucking space. You're in a leaky <laughs> environment, so. I think that's okay. called an asteroid attack. Uh, oh, yeah, so, and to do the thing it closest to hand, I'm going to have you do a coordination plus reaction. So you're grabbing the closest thing at hand to hit with, and then depending on what your roll, I'll tell you what you grab. How about we do it that way? If you're just grabbing that the closest thing at hand, you should do a coordination, three, reaction, and then, and then hold on to that number. Eddie, what are you doing? You've got her, like, she's on the ground, she's grappled, and there is a scalpel kind of sticking out of your gut right now. Oof. Okay, so while I have her grappled... Can I attack her? Is that an option? Yeah, you can attack her. Okay, then we're just gonna punch her in the face. I want you to do... This is gonna be a coordination plus toughness uh, roll. Same exact amount of dice. Okay. Uh, the nurse is going to do something that you don't... Or the doctor is gonna do something you don't recognize. Diedrich. Can I... Can I throw the weapon and not have to use a weapon? Just go for it. Throw it? Yeah, like throw it at him. Uh, or would that still throwing is also weaponry. Okay, never mind then. Uh, I go to curb stomp. Maybe dangerous. <laughs> I don't that's, want to be impaled. That's going to be a uh, strength plus toughness with a... Uh, that's a hand-to-hand -hand attack. Uh, I would like to ask, since I use my dread manifestation, that's adding a minute now? Yes, add a minute every time you use Dread Manifestation. Okay. And... Strength and toughness? Yeah, strength and toughness for that roll. What is your... Donovan, what do you got? What are you doing? Uh, Donovan... So they're grappled on the ground? Or mm -hmm. grappled on their feet? Grappled on the ground. It was like a okay. takedown. I'm gonna stomp her spine. I have a little bit of rage right now. Okay, okay, so that's also a so basically while being held down, the two of you are like giving her a boot party. So, <laughs> uh, Donovan is going to roll a that's going to be again a strength plus toughness and a hand to hand check on that. Or a foot to head in this case. Sixes on the die don't do anything fun for me, right? No. Didn't think so. Alright, I got two. Okay. She uh, was unable to dodge any of it and is going to take two damage off of that hit. Diedrich, what'd you get? Three. She dodged two and is going to take another damage off that hit. Uh, so the first kick, like, bounces her head to the side, and you, like, kind of, you feel your kick come down, but barely kind of, like, graze the side of her head. Uh, though you still get a little bit of damage in there as she, like, uh, grabs uh, Eddie by the face. 
uh, with one of her hands. And Eddie, uh, you are going to have to make a keep it together check really quick. Hey. As uh, for a moment, you are granted a vision of emptiness. Uh, complete darkness is what envelops all of your senses. You no longer feel anything. You no longer see anything. The smell that the smells of the ship around you you normally would have noticed, and the blood that's kind of like and you know nothing. All of it's gone. It's like you've been deadened entirely. Uh, but you're gonna keep it together real quick. That is one success and a three on my distress die. Okay, so the one success basically means you're not gonna add a minute to this, but. Uh, for your round this time, your attack, it just does not happen. Um, you are like you. You're, but he you're has great. an auto success. Right, but this is a this is a dread manifestation. He's, his okay. auto success is making him not take minutes for what's happening okay. from the keep it together. But this is a dread manifestation from the doctor who is ah. using it on them, uh, and it basically just stops them for a turn. Uh. Or for this turn, and then Selena. Hey, uh, so I even using seconds to add a D8. I have a complicated success in zero. Okay. Uh, all right. And then, so basically, you reach for it the. It didn't closest, quite work. You reach for the closest thing at hand, just but you can't find anything. So you slam the blanket down on their head, and it doesn't do anything. <laughs> if it didn't work the first time. Yeah. So you're getting kind of a little frustrated there, Selena. What are you gonna do now? <laughs> uh, what 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 are the others currently? Can, can you? Because we're going like backwards in time, it's a little confusing. What is the current status of the doctor? Oh, sorry, I meant to mention that. Uh, Eddie doesn't notice this, but the doctor, once touching him that way, slides right out of his grip and is standing back up at this point. I'm just like. Yeah. You're just in the on the floor, like, just sort of yeah. sort of dead fished for a moment. Uh, so what are you doing, Selena? I'm gonna I'm gonna try actually a <laughs> distraction. Um, I I'm gonna I'm gonna like um the pendulum thing the panda. I'm gonna like like hey, can can you tell me what this means and just kind of like get in her face about it to shock her. So I'm going to have you Just, make a, a charisma plus, we'll call it, oof. manipulation. Yeah, these are, this is uh, not a good idea. I only have one dice of these, but we'll, we'll see how this goes. Yeah, you're good. Charisma plus manipulation on that. Eddie, you are, uh, you come back around, you're going to come back around in this, this, this round here. Huh, uh, I got a success. <laughs> and notice that you are not, Just hold on to that, um, and you are no longer grappling and she is standing up as you're kind of on the ground on your side. I feel worse than that one time I tried making bootleg coconut moonshine. Oh, I'll tell you what. Uh, what happened? Where? What? Oh, no. Uh, I am going to... Tackling is not... or That didn't work so well for me the first time. So uh, I'm just going to punch. Like Punching is a very solid option. Okay. Right, Strength plus toughness, and yep. you're gonna, that's a hand-to-hand -hand roll. The doctor, as uh, she is standing up, is going to uh, try to stab at Diedrich. Diedrich, what are you doing? I am just gonna punch. Okay. Go right, right for the gut. Same roll. Strength, toughness. You are holding a weapon. I don't have any way to use it. You can still use it. Do you have hand to hand? Oh. oh. Then you, yeah, it's the same type of roll. It's still gonna be like a okay. strength plus toughness roll, but you get more damage. Okay, I'll, I'll use the weapon then. Yeah, not having an aptitude does not mean you can't do it. You just don't get the the increased dice to D8. That's the only thing it, it would okay. be. Donovan, what are you doing? So does Eddie have a scalpel sticking out of his gut? <laughs> no, no, That's the not... doctor is still holding the scalpel. Damn it. <laughs> Are we about to suggest, hey, can I borrow that for a second? Oh, sure, here you go. Shared is scared, friend. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> oh, <laughs> good. Friends like these, who needs enemies? I'll tell you what. 
Uh, I'm gonna go in for, you know, a flanked punch her in the side of the head and the kidney wherever I can get her uh, attack while I shout at her that consent is key. You're supposed to ask for permission first. I like how we're all punching. I've got a giant weapon, apparently. You can punch I've, with the weapon. I've yeah. tried and found various improvised methods that that much anything to do with punching, so I might just have to try that. Yeah, I stab you in the guts, sir. <laughs> so that's a strength plus toughness uh, hand-to-hand there, Donovan. I mean, what'd you get? I got three. Three? Yep. She got one, so that's two more damage to her. So you're, you pop her good in the head. Um... Right outside her, the head. Like yeah, you give her a good pop, like right in the side of the head, as uh, she's lunging towards Diedrich. Who gets two, two, and she gets zero. So you do three damage to her. So as she's stabbing oh. for you, you take this thing and crack her right on the side of the head, and she just bonk, falls to the ground, completely unmoving. Uh, part of her skull split open. Uh, her her scalpel scattering across the floor. All right, then. I'm going to go pick that scalpel up. What in the boy blue blazes was that? I, and I look at my wound, and I'm like, ow. Ow, oh, ow that's smart. in the right spot. Grab some gauze. Uh, Smack it on there. <laughs> I, I should, I'm going to see like if I can clean the wound and patch it up as best I can with what... what we are in the med bay, so... Yeah, I got I mean, hurt in the, worst po- in the best possible place. Uh, do you can do a medicine check, but you don't have medicine, so you're gonna try to do a acumen plus. We're gonna call it metal because you're doing this to yourself. I would like everybody to know that, in spite of everything, he has a three to acumen. <laughs> All right. See, like I, I'll tell you what. See, the spell and sassafras is important, but also using it in the correct way. Uh, that is. Oh, oh no. That is one success for all that talk all right. about Sassafras. So you're <laughs> able, to, you're able to patch yourself up like decently. You don't get any help back, but you are definitely no longer bleeding. You are, yeah, you basically you got you're the bleeding in a pad. You're not bleeding out anymore. You know, you're not gonna. You're you're kind of in a place where you can deal with it, and you see that it's not super serious. She's hit mostly meat there, nothing vital. It feels a little sore, but you'll live. Or. Yeah. All right. No. So, if she just up and started hacking and slashing, and I just my mind goes back to Yost, does that mean that Yost and any other thing that we find around here is gonna try to end us too? Um, I yeah. guess. <clears throat> I re- <laughs> I didn't get the chance to ask her what this meant. Oh, oh uh, hang you, on, hang you on. You do notice as holding as you're holding it up, Selena, that as she was like on the ground dying, she was just staring directly at that medallion as she kind of slipped out of consciousness. Well, apologize profusely. Maybe you could have gotten the chance to ask her had I not tackled her into my, you know, defense of my kidneys. But I, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's all Although right. I think it was the. The blow from the death hammer here. I've now nicknamed this Omni Tool the Death Hammer. All right. <laughs> right then. Uh, so we need to split. Like, we need to find out what's going on here and w- w- what are we going to do? Like, uh, this is out of character. Like, can we leave? Is that an option? The area that you're in. So, yeah, but we can't leave the ship, but there's no, like, if everybody on the ship is dead, like I yeah, forgot the general setting, like it was this was on a mega ship, if I remember you're on a correctly. Massive, yeah, massive ship that's holding thousands of people in cryopods. It is very are, slow. Yeah. Are there shuttles that we be aware of? No, you're also hundreds of years from Earth. All right. So, what we need to do? I uh, know. Let's go back in character. All right. Well, we need to find out what happened and find somewhere safe. I, anybody got any ideas? Well, we were heading to engineering. 
That sounds about as good a spot as any. Uh, yeah. And I say we steer clear of any blue bloods anywhere around town, because uh, I point at the kidney. Like, I'm, this is not gonna. When this, not a repeatable thing. You've got. I only got as two. long as they hit the same one, right? <laughs> Right. So, uh, yeah, you, there are lifts in the uh, infirmary area that can take <laughs> you up uh, to the living quarters or the you know the crew deck, and then above that is the um is the is the there an armory? Uh, you know that there is in fact an armory with weapons uh, on the bridge. It is there is a small security force that's usually a part of things. Uh, just because, you know, you're in space and sometimes people get a little wonky, uh, though they're all space less lethal. Madness. Yeah, they're all less lethal weapons. It's, uh, you know, big, thick uh, stun canisters. Batons and yeah, stun tear. batons and not tear, not no gas or anything like that, but basically like, <laughs> sand, like sandbags. Like shotguns that fire sandbag rounds type thing. Uh, okay. Rubber bullets are, are here. But and they they they'll hurt and they'll deal. You'll put someone down with them. But I mean, you can break skulls with a rubber bullet. You can kill right? someone with a rubber bullet. Yes, you are yeah. correct about this. But they are not. <laughs> it's not. They're not it's meant it's to. It's less lethal, not non-lethal. Yeah. Yes. I think it legally had to change the name of that shit when they kept killing people. <laughs> yeah. All right. So what's the plan? What's the route? And uh, you got a map. I speak to Donovan because I think Donovan had the data pad thing. Yeah, I mean, as far I mean, as we I were... know, the ship's layout hasn't changed. You all, yeah, you all know how the, the ship's layout. Yeah, well, I mean, I, it's just like meta. It's like, how are we going to get from A to B? What's the quickest way? Let's the game lips. plan this. Yep. Ah, uh, yes, the the, the classic <laughs> elevator twist. <laughs> all right. Well. Uh, I'm already bleeding, so might as well. Uh, I'll let's let's let the bad luck magnet lead the party. Okay, so if you're hopping on the lifts, uh, as we get in here, uh, you are all again blasted with that same those same sensations, the voices, the uh, strange emotions <clears throat> coming in you. But this time, you're hearing louder in your own native language. Uh, join us. Join us. Step outside. Be one. It's the kind Thanks. of stuff. Everybody needs to make a keep it together check on that. Well, yours truly has rolled no successes on this one. That is an added minute to your clock. Hey, the distressed eye just keep coming. <laughs> Uh, remind me what it is again. It's yeah. uh your in your resilience plus metal. Your metal Yay. automatically d8. No. Okay, I uh that's that's zero. Add a minute if you get a zero. Three. You're Three. good. We, at, at four, do we get another, or is it at? If you get four against this. Uh, oh. you'll never have to make it again. No, I mean for minutes in the chest eye. At four, you get fair. yeah. Four minutes is two. Is two. Oh, okay. Eye. For every okay, ten minutes you have, now. you have in the chest eye. Okay, I'm then three. I'm good. I'm so, still keep rolling one. Yeah. I'm gonna use me some six seconds to ignore my distressed eye. Okay. So that way I can have a singular success. Yay! <laughs> Wise. Yeah. Uh, so, as you hop on this elevator, uh, Daedric, that craving is starting to hit you again. Uh, you feel like you might need a little bit more of a taste. Yeah, I pop one. Okay. So you're good for this scene. And, uh, <clears throat> as you get, as the lift moves its way up, um, it stops, uh, at the top level, which is where the bridge is. And uh, the doors open. And as you step onto the bridge, uh, the bridge is a 
it's the, the full top la layer of this uh, part of the ship where the crew operates is this kind of circular uh, area. And directly in front of you is this big, there's a chair sitting in front of a huge view screen, entirely black again. Um, and then uh, the chair sits like uh, above all these stations that are sort of like rounding the outside of the, the area. There's different engineering stations. There's where the pilot and the navigator would go and things, you know, where you would normally like be on part of your your thing here. Um, chairs, of course, for the captain. Uh, and then there is a second, uh, the the XO or, or whomever usually would be you know, the one that's sitting there at shift change. Um, Celine gets an auto success from the chat. Oh. Yay. Hey. And then, uh, as you look around, you see that there are numerous bodies here. Uh, so far, you have found, you know that per crew, there are 20 people. So far, you have found five of them. There are 15 more people somewhere on this ship out of that crew. Who knows which ones might wake up. Uh, but uh, here there are about six people laying around, and there is somebody sitting in the captain's chair as well. You just can't see whom. Uh, you see their, their hands kind of on the, the edges there. Um, someone is sitting at the pilot station. Uh, also, their head kind of like back and lolling like they are asleep at the wheel. Um, there is someone at the engineering station, and then there are... How is that? One, two, three... There's someone at the engineering station. There's someone uh, sitting right at, laying down right outside the elevator, leaning up against the shaft, uh, the lift, like leaning up against the shaft. And then there are two other people that you see uh, laying down, uh, kind of just kind of on the ground in one of the little uh, work areas that are kind of like set down in the floor of the, the ship. None of them are moving currently. <clears throat> I go to check flight logs. Um, okay, so you're heading over to the pilot uh, area, and I want you to make a quick... This is an intellect plus... That's what, acumen? Or acumen, sorry. I didn't mean to say intellect. Uh, acumen plus wit... And then uh, you're going to get D8s on this for your pilot, because you're dealing with the pilot's area. That is three successes. Okay. Uh, very quickly, you see that the logs for the ship have been pretty much the same. Whatever, at some point, roughly 59 years ago, uh, about 59, 60 years ago, there was... Uh, just the sensor, external sensors just seem to go out uh, entirely. And all of the, the recording, everything that they had in there just shows complete blackness. Um, <clears throat> as you're, uh, it seems that you've been following along the same trajectory the entire time, and you're not sure where you're supposed to be uh, navigation-wise, or if you went off at some point, but your logs show that at some point there was a course correction roughly 63 years ago. Um that doesn't seem to be correct in your mind, though it's going to take a navigator to assist you on this. We got one. <laughs> okay, navigator, are you helping out? Yeah. I also have navigation. Oh, okay, so the two of you can work this out together. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> and it's going to be complicated. So, uh, acumen plus wit, both of you, with your navigation upgrading to D8s. Uh, while they're doing this, what are you doing, Donovan? Uh, Donovan is... Sound funny. Uh, Donovan's gonna look for something to smell. He wants to just kind of chill out. It's gonna wait for these nav logs to come back. <laughs> Got a a good uh, theory. So he's looking Donovan's for like taking a, break. a granola bar <laughs> or something, some kind of food, because food is his comfort smell. So. Well, you did not go to the uh, best the hall. Oh, best hall. Yeah. 
was like, I'm hungry. I want to go. Eddie, what are you doing with this going on? I am petrified at the absolute possibility of any of these currently peaceful bodies coming to life. So I want to make sure that I am watching out because right now they're sitting down and quiet. But the second any of them so much as twitches, uh, I'm raising a red flag. So I want to basically watch their backs while they're working. I want to make sure that nothing creeps up on us. Okay. So I'm going to have you make a intuition plus. No, we're going to call this a coordination plus vigilance. Is this and this and one of these. If you have tactics or something other applicable, you can use that. Absolutely right. not. So <laughs> the two of you with your nav roll, what'd you get? Two. Two. Yeah. Oh, the two of you together get a four. So as the two of you are kind of working through this problem together, you see that, yes, roughly 63 and a half years ago, somebody called for a course correction that makes no sense. You know what star cluster you were heading towards, and you knew that this dark spot, that, that there was a dark spot on the um, uh, the nav logs and long-range sensors that was assumed was a black hole, uh, but and now we're reason, in. the ship turned directly towards it, and uh, now you seem to be in the midst of whatever it is. Uh, it seems as soon as you hit the outer area of this dark space, uh, that is when all of the sensors and navigation started getting kind of wonky. Um, <clears throat> you can see that like external sensors are still working. Uh, so the only one that seems to be working is... Um, you can, you're picking up some sort of like... Uh, motion out there, like you're picking up something, like there should be planetary bodies or something that you have like on you, you just can't see them. Um, it looks like wherever you're at, it used to be a solar system, you're getting readings of like, you know, uh, getting r the radiation readings you would have normally seen from like a sun at some point, but they don't seem to be there anymore, something strange about them, so you can't really put it together without a big science brain on that one, uh, who does sort of Mm -hmm. that sort of work, but right now you just know that you are in the wrong place and you have been in going in the wrong direction for quite some time. Uh, oh, you get a phenomenal success on that too. Uh, also, you notice that uh, where did my thing go? Oops, wrong page. Okay, you are actually able to find who ordered the course correction and the course change, and that was the captain, uh, Captain Davis, uh, who is sitting in the chair that you look up at behind you. Um, and the navigator that's sitting, uh, Celine, sitting in your chair, you you look down and uh, just kind of while you're thinking, you've, you've moved them over, like, using their station, but you see the same strange symbol, like, on a necklace that they're wearing as well um and as you look to start to point it out Diedrich you like are just kind of drawn to the same thing uh Diedrich add a minute this is a you are now recognizing it's the exact same symbol that was carved into that box for some reason lovely yep but it looks like whatever happens here you've got some sort of possible conspiracy and eddie you after you see them kind of like uh messing around down there you see the captain's fingers start to touch console buttons <clears throat> well we got a live one here and the captain stands up and says uh you there what is your rank and sit uh, and station uh my rank is gold three, and my station is support. Um, are you trying to answer flippantly, or you just don't know what those things are? I'm answering flippantly because I am not answering okay. a zombie. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, <person> says, 
I will like uh listen, I don't have time for your attitude. I will see that you go through disciplinary action. As it stands, I'm gonna have to order all four of you back to your quarters and to get a good night's sleep. No. I'm not tired, I just woke up. Uh as uh Diedrich and Celine, as you're talk you're looking at this conversation happen, both of the people standing right next to you start to move and wake up. Can I just reflexively swing the weapon I'm holding? Uh, you can. I want you to make a. Mm. Maybe we're gonna call it a coordination plus reaction. Swing on that. Uh. Because they're not actually actively attacking you yet. Okay. I got three. And that is zero successes. You got four successes on that. Uh, you Man. crack him in the head for four damage. And uh, he pops and he kind of like, just sort of like, uh, he's. you can tell he's kind of like stiffened up, like he's half knocked out from the blow. And he is stunned, but however, that immediately is going to trigger the captain reaching down and pulling his uh, small sidearm here. Oh, not fair. <laughs> uh, and everybody needs to roll an initiative. <laughs> good thing I grabbed a scalpel. The good thing I grabbed an injury. No. <laughs> uh, what's initiative again? Uh... It's your intuition, intuition and vigilance. vigilance. Right. But okay. for your vigilance, you use D8s. No, only if you have tactics or a combat skill. Okay, well, there's this. Wait, really? Yes, you don't get D8s unless you have tactics or a combat skill. Okay, it was not. Just the, uh, it's just your <sighs> the other checks you get automatically, so... Okay, yeah, it's the way it's written on the character sheets. It it just gives it to you automatically, so I will reroll. Yeah, it thing. should not be doing that. Uh, that is a. Okay, they were successes, but I will do the rules. Oh, I I still got an A success. So okay, so <laughs> anyone get four or more? Okay, so that's just the captain. Oh, of course. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> <sighs> That'd be trick. And I do. Does my auto success go immediately? Like, it just bring me up two in the. You could use it when two? you want to use it. Okay, I've got to hold off. Though. The initiative isn't that important. <laughs> uh, two. Who do we get two? I got two successes. And you wing at one. And you wing at zero. I. Big fat zero <laughs> from the top to the bottom. Oh, the tables have turned. And what, Except... what did you get, Selena? What did you get? One. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I rerolled the dice that previously were d8s, and one of them was the loyalist success. So it didn't take me down from like two to zero, but it took me down from the one. <laughs> okay. The pilot can't do shit because he's fucked up in the head. So Donovan, uh, uh, slice whoever's nearest to me. So from I... where you are, the closest one's gonna be the captain. Okay, cool. Slicing out at Captain. Oh, Captain. Okay. Uh, strength and toughness. Uh, for no, for for a weapon like this, it's coordination plus coordination. Uh, coordination plus toughness. All right. Uh, Celine, what are you doing? Um, can I? Can I? How um sturdy is the the talisman? Like both the pendant and the cord. I mean, you held one. You've got one in your hands, and it looks to match it. You could probably, with a jerk, it's gonna break it. You're not, yeah, you're not able to. Like, okay, so they they cannot be improvised as a weapon, then. Like the pen. Probably not. Be used. Like it, you, you, if you were trying to choke him with it or something, it's gonna break. 
Yeah, that's that. That was the idea because there's somebody wearing a necklace, who was obviously uh like seems to have been correlated with everybody she knows dying. Uh. Or <laughs> okay, um, we're we're gonna do the classic punch. Classic okay. punch. Because uh, it was working for the other one. So who, uh, who are you punching? Because there's two targets. Hmm. No, uh, no, she, uh, Selena's right next to some uh, navigator that woke up. So I imagine. Ah. Yeah. The navigator, yeah. I'm just gonna do okay. like. So that is a strength plus toughness hand to hand on that one. And the navigator is going to attempt to attack you as well. Eddie, what are you doing? Uh, well, as much as I would like to do the classic punch, because the classic punch has gotten me very far, uh, that gun is scary. That gun is frightening. Uh, I'm trying to disarm him. I'm trying to knock the gun away from. I'm rest just trying to rip the gun away from him. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna make you. You're gonna make a. We're gonna call that a coordination plus reaction uh, in order to disarm. And that's gonna be a hand to hand roll. Ooh, that is not my friendliest combination of dice. All right, Edric. I'm a swing again. Pop him in the brains. All right. And yeah, the captain. I'm, I'm going for the kill. The captain is shooting at you since you are the one. The, the aggressor here. Doing the thing. So I need you to make a coordination reaction roll against his shot. He got two on the attack. I got two on the defense. So that is a one. Uh, you feel a sting in your shoulder as you take one damage from this rubber bullet popping off of your back. Uh, and Diedrich, what did you get on your roll? Uh, strength and toughness? Yeah. Three successes. Uh, he also got a zero again. So you actually like come down a second time and and completely cave his skull in. Um, he is completely dead at this point. He did not get a chance to do shit. Good. <laughs> yeah. My Eddie. left kidney appreciates it. Uh, yeah. It. I'm rolling. That is two successes and a three on the distress. Which I... Okay. Distress is just bad if it's one, right? Uh, one or, one yeah, or four. Yeah. I forget. One. One. So yeah, that's two successes to disarm. So as you wrap your hands around like where the gun is after he fires it, the captain just skillfully grabs your wrist and throws you off to the side, almost like a judo flip where you land on your back. You don't take any damage, but you sort of like get no tossed over the side. No he, roll, he rolled a five on his dodge for this. Like, was just straight <laughs> up like, nah, man, didn't happen. So uh, he tosses you off like you're nothing. Um, yes. And the navigator is going to punch up at you, Selene. Make a coordination reaction roll, please. Because, like, unlike me, she's she's coordinated, so we have a chance. Um, so is it just coordination and then reaction? Yep. Okay. It's D sixes unless you have hand to hand or some sort of no combat skills, just mm -hmm. closest is performance. <laughs> okay, I got I rolled a one. I mean, yeah, it, now uh, not one very... of this one. What? Uh, what are you going? What are you going to do for? Net one. Oh, net one. Oh, yeah. You got to. Okay, you're fine. Her fist. Her uh, the the navigator's fist comes up, and you just kind of like deftly dodge back. What was your attack roll? It was um with the bonus added. It was a three. It's a three. All right. So uh, as you kind of move back, your punch comes down directly on the side of his head, and the navigator takes a couple of damage here. Um. As you give him a good pop in the noggin. Donovan. I got a two. A two? A two. Okay, you're coming up behind this, uh, the captain who uh, was shooting. You get a zero. Nice. So you did three damage to the captain. The captain, like, uh, after he, along. like, he tosses Eddie, like, over his arm. And as he does that, you come in with the, the scalpel and sort of, like, stab him right in the back. And you feel him tense up uh, really good. It's you... Rute. Yeah, and then <laughs> Donovan, what are you doing this time? I was going to 
keep going for them lungs or see if I can't use the scalpel to sever the uh, spinal cord. Okay, so keep on stabbing. Same roll as before, coordination plus toughness. Uh, the navigator, or, or Celine, what are you doing? Okay, um, so the, the, the punching the punching worked? Uh, yeah. And what is the other navigator? Are they still standing? The other one's dead. The pilot's dead. You look over and, like, you see that the skull has been crushed in of the pilot uh, that died because Diedrich has handled business. (laughs) (laughs) The boys are back in town. (laughs) Okay, well, that song will be in my head now. Thank you. (laughs) Okay, uh, we're going to... I'm just I'm just gonna see if if we I can like um push the push the navigator to the, to the ground to decrease the odds of punching back at me. All right, so you try to knock him down. That's gonna be a yep. strength plus toughness. And the navigator is going is has a uh, stood up with their like attack earlier, oh, so okay. they're gonna try to hit you again. And Eddie, what are you doing? Well, I'm on the floor, and I would vehemently like to just, like, billy goat kick the captain in whatever, you know, center of mass I can achieve. So, let's go for the not-so-classic kick. All right. So, that's a strength plus toughness. Diedrich. Oh, I'm going to full vault over these. Um... These, uh, the consoles up at the captain. Okay. And I'm gonna, and I'm, I'm a swing. Captain is just aiming down at Eddie and is going to take a shot there. But I'm so tiny that he won't hit me. Captain, uh, make a coordination plus reaction roll, please. Eddie. Uh, let's see. Eh, just these. That is no successes. Uh, okay, no successes. That is four damage coming. Like this rubber yeah. bullet hits you right in the sternum, and you you like have this moment of fuck uh, kind of pain uh, as Diedrich steps up to swing. And what'd you get? Four. Four. Ooh. Yes. That Somebody's got to roll well. <laughs> he got a four. They both. Uh, so you you uh, you 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 feel like you're gonna crack his skull, but last second he moves his head back, and it just clips him across the jaw a little bit for uh, a much smaller hit than you were expecting. Uh, anyone's ever made a haymaker blow that did not land knows what I'm talking about with that one. Yeah. Uh, Eddie, what are you doing after you you know? I got the one success, and like this kick is. Uh... It, it, it better be do something, but it's a singular success. I'm rolling like dog poo poo. Uh, <laughs> you, the kick lands, but he checks the kick with his leg, kind of like up. So it lands, but it doesn't do any real damage. <sighs> uh, the navigator is going to uh, reach, make a coordination reaction roll, please, so That is going to reach out. What, so what did I do before? I, I rolled a zero. Is this something different? This is a different one. This is coordination reaction in that. Okay. Uh, the coordination reaction is a dodge check. It they're trying to lay their hands on you. Coordination. That's three. Reaction is one. And okay. And the dice fell on the ground. Oh, that was that was a three. So that um, that's a total of zero successes again. Okay, zero to zero is still a win for the attacker. So the attacker yeah. is going to touch you and is oh, going no. to uh, do the same blank thing space. to you. <laughs> Basically, you, yeah, blank space. Uh, you, for a moment, just like all of your senses just get disconnected. You fall to the ground. Uh, your attempt to push them is just, nah, you're, you're getting noodle armed and just sort of fall. Um, and then Donovan. Uh, Diedrich has a solace trigger from the chat, and Donovan got a zero. 
for their attack. Okay. And a little check-in. As of our last uh, update, we have raised $10 for tonight's cause. Woo! Thank you, everybody. All right, so that... Uh, the second one, you pull the, like, scalpel out trying to move again, but uh, the captain kind of, like, shifts to the right, causing you to, to completely miss the blow. Donovan, what are you doing? Uh, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna try punching. Or... Would it still be considered a punch if I do like a a heel palm strike? Yeah, it's on, a hand to hand attack. On the uh, the scalpel, just to try to drive it in there deeper. Did you leave? I thought you pulled the scalpel out to hit it again. Oh yeah, I guess I you do. So since you missed the last one, it's not like stuck yeah. in there anymore. All but. right. So yeah, I'm gonna just swing then. That's a bigger dice pool. Swing without the scalpel. To be clear. Strength toughness then. Celine, uh, you come to on the floor. Looking up and around, you see that the uh, navigator has stepped around you and is heading up to help the captain. Isn't the cap the captain like head smash or is that a different? No, the pilot. Get their heads. Okay, smashed. those are those are different. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm gonna go up standing, and is there any um, systems that they seem to be relying on, like in the? Like do it for do it. How how does the pilot things work? Like is there is there like a button I can press that would make like if you have an instinctual desire to like have your workstation in order, is there something you could do that would just like yeah, it's not gonna distracting? Uh, you would need time. Like you were just playing with those systems. It's it would take so much to make any real dent in what's going on. Uh, the, the chances okay. of you doing something to the navigation array that stops the fight is pretty slim because right now you know that you're stuck in a giant pocket of darkness and that whatever you do navigationally is not going to take effect for like 35 years okay or like matter it like it's not going to change your your you know it, your situation for decades so hmm. okay well if i can keep those hands away from my face i think i will uh just kind of do like um I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to trip somebody. <laughs> okay, so that is gonna be a. We're gonna call it a coordination plus toughness to do a grapple throwdown kind of thing. That's hand to hand if you got it. Uh, the okay. navigator is actually coming up to try to uh, attack Diedrich from behind. Hey. Eddie, what are you doing? Bleeding. Uh, <laughs> I I I have. I don't know if I do this right when I. Take damage, I jot down a square, right? Because I've taken yeah. seven damage so far. That one, two, three. Four, yeah, you have five, five left. Yeah, that is uh, dangerously close to my second death. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's, uh, okay. The play in my head is survive. Because, but, but there's two enemies and there's four of us. So realistically, my hiding is only going to get somebody else also hurt. So, the captain has taken some damage, right? Mm-hmm. Then let's keep piling on the damage, because the sooner this guy goes down, the faster I do not die. There you go. So, you're going to hit the captain? I am going to stand up this time, because being on the floor hurts. I am angry. I am... The, the adrenaline is pumping. That bullet knocked the wind out of me, and I wish to reciprocate the feeling with my fist because I don't have anything on. So yeah, I'm punching him. Yes, that is the classic punch. <laughs> the one two. Uh, Dedrick, Diedrich. 
<laughs> oh, uh, I get my solace though. Right? For what? I don't know. I I just I got one from the chat. Oh, you get a solace from the chat? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you can go ahead and activate it. Roll all of your distress die, however many you have. Okay. Each one of them comes with a four. You take a minute away. I got it too. <laughs> you, how many? Aww. You only have one distress die. Yeah. Oh. Somehow kept out of this. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Your solace fails, so you okay. do not lose anything. They're usually better to use when you have like four or five minutes, four or five okay. distress die, because then you end up taking, you can take a chunk of minutes off usually, but... Yeah, I only have, like, three minutes. Uh, I'm gonna just swing at the captain again. Please okay. do. The captain this time is going to attempt to shoot Diedrich. Diedrich, please make a coordination reaction roll. I have failed. Oh. All right. So uh, as you come into what, what, what was your swing? Um, that was four successes. Okay. So uh, the shot rings out and hits you kind of in the side as the uh, you come back around with the swing again, clocking him a lot better this time. You feel some connection against his upper shoulder and hear him kind of grunt as he goes over you three damage. And he kind of stumbles a little bit as Eddie is punching. What'd you get, Eddie? I had <clears throat> two successes, a one on my distress die, but because of optimistic and because I think that with the power of not wanting to die, I will come out of this smiling and singing. She'll be coming around the mountain. You want to use these seconds? No, no, no. I will use my optimistic to cancel out my one distress yeah. die for the scene. I get that. Uh, I'm saying he rolled a three. He so rolled a three. So you can use seconds to add to this if you want to. Then, uh, yes, I will add seconds. How many for her? I know an additional die is two. To re-roll a failed die is one. Uh, so I'm just going to add two seconds, put an eight, and I'd have another die here. Come on. Lucky number. Nope. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a two. That's a two. That doesn't do it. All right, so uh, you swing out and you whiff this swing as the captain kind of dodges his head back. The navigator, uh, make a coordination reaction roll, please, Diedrich, because the navigator is hitting you from behind or attempting to. Three successes. Uh, misses. Like, you feel something coming at you. Like, you hear him, uh, the navigator step up and you duck just as this uh, uh, big swing kind of like slides right over your head. And Celine. I have two successes for um, trying to trip the navigator. All right. So you reach up and grab at the navigator who got two successes to dodge. No, three su one oh. success to dodge. Sorry. I, I, fours are not successes. Um, losing my mind. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so you're able to grab by the boot and actually knock... Uh, the navigator to the ground so that is where they'll be at in the beginning of their next turn and donovan i got one success one success let's see what that's a zero so you actually do get a good clip on the side of the head of the captain here happiness all right and uh <clears throat> All right, so Donovan. This guy, this dice is going to dice jail. Um, take <clears throat> Yeah, we'll just go ahead and punchy punch, punch 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 your son. Classic punch. punch. The old Classic. one too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The old gun show. Celine, what are you doing? Okay, well, they're down. I want to keep them down. Continue to grapple? Yeah. If you're going to hold them down. I want you to make a strength plus toughness check. The navigator is going to attempt to kick you in the face. Okay. Uh, Eddie, what are you doing? 
Uh, I'm going to keep piling on the damage. Like, like I have Donovan on one end, I have Diedrich on the other, and I'm on the. We're doing the standard final, uh, the, like triangle attack. One of us is gonna get to hit. And Diedrich. Oh, I full on react to the swing that missed me, and I come down on this dude's face. All right, so the three of you that are attacking the captain, I'm just going to let you know that the captain is doing a dread manifestation for Void here, or this <laughs> sort of No, of I am doing the navigator. Oh, you're doing the navigator. Okay, yes. you're popping navigator. Good, good, oh, I'm good. grappling. Yes, the one, the one they're grappling. I am going straight for the navigator's head because he whiffed me. Good to know. Give me a second. Uh, so this void thing, this is like a healing circle kind of. Uh... No, 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 no. no. <laughs> ah, it's not what's going on. I need to pull it up. Oh, okay, okay. Did you think you'd I'd ask? It's some kind of shenanigan. again. We'll find out. Mm. Oh, those are void Time. minds. Sorry, I'm, I'm, cool. I'm this time. <laughs> Death. Yes, Dad. Um, no, Intimately this, acquainted. Uh, this ability, basically, uh, for Donovan, or not for Donovan, sorry, for Cat, for the captain. Uh, you see the captain turn just completely dark, like becomes a black hole in and of himself, and. Uh, all of your attacks as they go through are just going to go right through him like he's not there. I chose the right person to attack. Uh, uh, Diedrich, what'd you get? I got two successes. Two successes, eh? The dodge roll on old is a zero. That is three damage. Cracking the navigator in the back of the head for three damage. And Eddie, your attack, your your fist goes right through this thing, like like he's no longer. It's it's almost like the lights turned out on where he was, and you just punched into a dark room. Um, but you know, there's light on either side of him. Your fist goes entirely through. You come back. You look kind of. <clears throat> you had this moment of the fuck that just happened, and uh, then we go to the navigator who is going to kick at Celine in the face, Celine. Coordination reaction, please. That is a net one success, the same as the attack. Okay, um, well, uh, she got four on her attack, so that is three damage to you as the boot hits you right in the eye. Pops you back. One on your attack is uh, to continue to grapple her as she tries to squirm free, which she fails to do. The navigator is still grappled, and Donovan, your uh, big blow ends up whiffing, unfortunately. On yep. old uh, step out of town captain here. What do you. Uh, add, and you'll notice as soon as you go through him, he seems to pop back into existence. Um, so, yeah. I grappled space zombies, and all I got was this black guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I look at Celine. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, uh, Don Donovan's just gonna do what he knows. He knows how to throw blows. Doesn't matter if this fucker ghosted for two seconds. Going ghost. Right. That'll be a singular success. Okay. Um, nice. Do not like us tonight. Celine, what are you doing? Um, is. Are there any parts of the uniform that could be easily, like, attached to the navigation? Or, like, any chairs? Uh, not not really. There's not, like, a... Thing okay, like, so I can't, like, I can't, like, take a belt and then just, like, strap them to the leg yeah, there, that it's way. Yeah, it's a jumpsuit. There is no belt. Okay. <laughs> 
Okay, in, in that case, uh, I'm gonna see if I can, like, uh, get their face into the ground and away from me. So, like, grab them by the hair, basically. Uh, We're just, this is just, this is just some very brutal wrestling at this point. Yeah, so still strength plus toughness on the grapple there. Uh, the navigator is actually going to try to do something. You're not sure what, Eddie? Oh. What are you doing? Besides dying, I will... Yeah, it's the same logic applies. The faster they die, the safer I get. So I'm going to join my friend Donovan in beating up this very, very, very tough captain. Okay. And Diedrich. I am going to break the captain's leg. Or attempt to. Okay. With my huge Omni tool just right at the leg. Uh, the captain is actually going to attempt to reach at you, Diedrich. So I need you to make a coordination reaction roll, please. Two successes. Misses. Like, you see him reach out uh, at your face, and you duck under it, and you swing with a what? Uh, that was, I think... Yeah. How many successes on your swing? Just one. Uh, we well got a zero, so that's two. Uh, you pop him kind of good. Uh, you miss the leg, but you hit him like kind of in the hip a bit. No more. Ooh. Uh, but he is. Uh, it looks like you did a little bit of damage. You felt a good crack there as you hit him, Eddie. So I rolled one success. Well, I rolled, That's two, enough, right? I rolled two successes. Uh, that is a miss. The navigator this, is... This dude! The navigator is attempting to uh, grab onto you again. Coordination reaction, please, Celine. One success for both attack and defense. Okay, so the one success uh, against the attack is zero. You are still touched. Uh, and you go limp again. Make a keep it together check. <laughs> okay. As you, as you experience... Or... Yeah. As you experience this sort of odd sensation, as this is the second time that you've been put in this, like, dark space, and you kind of... It feels comfortable, almost uh, euphoric, to be in that situation. While you're in there, you can hear the voices and feel all of the emotions of everyone else who's also in this same space. Their consciousness making it up. Part of it, part of it, kind of like eh, it'd be so bad. But make a keep it together check, please. Okay, that's uh, resilience and metal. <clears throat> metal. Okay. Okay, two fives. So that was a two. Yeah, you're good. <clears throat> and uh, Donovan, what'd you get? <clears throat> uh, one. One. Let's see if he can get a zero. And he did get a zero. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> so your fist just hits him right in the back of the head, and you feel him like you feel like the telltale, like I just knocked him out kind of feeling. As he lunges forward and like lands on his face, and his gun kind of goes scattering off to the side, uh, and he is down. Donovan, what do you do now? I'm uh, going for the gun. All right. And... Celine, what do you do? You wake up again, second time. And um, yeah, I'm. How did the graph? How did the gravity boots we wear work? Uh, basically, they will stick you to the ground in a situation in which. You don't want to be moved. Um, so they work, you know, uh, they're not super magnetic, but they're meant to keep you, like, if there's a course change or something that would, like, cause, like, a gravity shift from you getting thrown around. Can I do that on their back? I mean, they're not magnetic. <laughs> okay, so there's not, like, a force to it, it's just... 
Not that okay. much. You could probably do something like that to their hand, but not their body. Okay, well, the, the stop being touched in the face, yeah, just the stabbing well, of the hand. Well, they're standing up now, because that's what they did after they, they, they touched you, got out of the grapple, and stood up. So you'd have to get them down again to do that. But, okay, yeah. and in that case, they're going to stop engaging into this um, entity that keeps, like, trying to put me to sleep for good. <laughs> and I, I'm, go I'm going to try to do that from a distance. So this is, I think, throwing something, if there's any, anything that's, that's loose. Uh... Throwing something? I mean, there's not a lot just kind of like laying around or loose that's in the bridge. Uh, okay, can I take off my grab boot, boot and throw it as a weapon? Yeah. That's going to okay. be a coordination plus toughness to throw the weapon. And... Because this, this grappling isn't working, let's try. Yeah. And Donovan, what are you doing? Oh wait, I'm sorry, not time. I went the wrong way again. Uh, the navigator is going to attempt to attack Eddie. Eddie, what are you doing? I am at the risk of dying and not the best dodger in the world, so I can't, can I use my dread manifestation again? In spite of my better judgment? Yeah. So that's another minute going up in the pile. I am now at four minutes. <laughs> Okay. But that is Coronal Flash, so they uh, like they can't use their aptitudes or upgrades during their skill roll to attack me. Sure thing. And then what are you doing on your attack? That's like I a am. reaction ability for... Yes, that's for them, trying because yeah. I, I don't have that much HP left, and every single one of them is important to me right now. Uh, and then, you know, if they're coming to me, that's like, well, you can't get closer to me without me getting closer to you and punching you. So, it's like, it's a tit for tat. All right, so you're punching. I'm punching. And Diedrich. Is the navigator male? Uh, you're not sure. No. Not it's sure. The... Can't really tell. Kind of androgynous. I swing for the nuts anyway. All right. I mean, still, it still hurts to get in the nads, no matter what kind of nads you have. It's yeah, still... like it's okay. that's fair. But I was yeah. hoping for like a solid crush, of, you know. Yeah, I got you. Well, uh, you may find out in a moment. So what'd you roll? I go ahead and roll that. Uh, this, we're going to call that, since it's targeted, coordination plus toughness. Coordination? Ooh, even better of a roll. <laughs> I still only got one success. <laughs> Uh, they only got one success, so you actually do pop them. You don't really hit them where you were aiming, but you pop them, like, in the leg uh, okay. as you kind of do this uppercut swing, and you feel them kind of shift backwards a little bit. Uh, Eddie, would you get... Uh, my question is, since I used my Dread Manifestation and bumped up to four minutes, do I roll my two Distress Die now, as opposed to... You, you don't technically use the Manifestation until you are being attacked. So not until after your round when the Navigator attacks do you use it. So you do not have it yet, no. So this one goes down until then, and then... And then... That's one success. Better than zero. Um, and that is enough. They got zero. Uh, your punch actually cracks them right on the bridge of the nose, and the Navigator goes down as well. Yeah. Live. And we o we only came with that with what? Uh, a light shoulder grazing, a kick to the face, and... <laughs> Whatever the hell happened to you. <laughs> yeah, I can keep my boot on. <laughs> Man, I hope that whatever you learned from that panel was worth... I, I, I kind of look at my wound. All of this business. <laughs> what happened? Where are we? What's going on? The, the void is calling me now. I don't like this. Joy. Does it have cookies? <laughs> it, it felt like it. Almost. I, uh... I rifle through the captain's pocket. I rolled three successes for the attack that didn't happen. <laughs> Just wanted to say... <laughs> <laughs> You just do it anyway. It's it's dead on the floor. <laughs> yes, just... okay. Oh, the dice finally are being my friend. The, the, oh, never mind. It doesn't matter. The double tap. <laughs> what do I need to roll to rifle through the captain's pockets? Uh, nothing really. You you can just rifle through them. Uh, in the captain's pocket pockets, you find their info pad. 
um, as well as uh, please say plumbing. more stems. <laughs> no, there are no more stems in the cabinet. Yeah. As well as another one of those uh, little medallions that you noticed. Uh, and you need to make a keep it together check, please, on that. All right. Resilience That's... plus metal. Uh, you picked up that gun there, Donovan. Yeah. You're holding. What else are you doing after you the combat is done? I'm hungry, guys. <clears throat> I need a muffin. Or at least some I need... berries. I need a drink. I yeah. need medical attention. <laughs> Should we just put you back in your cryo bay? I don't think that's a good idea. Like, these things are waking up left and right, and that's where we put Yost. And I don't want to think what happens when we get back there, and who knows how many other of these things wake up. But I do agree that food is important. We've been asleep for God knows how long. Everything's gone belly up. And uh, I'll ignore my bruises, scars, bleeding, and everything. But, uh... Uh, as you're having this conversation, a uh, screen comes alive at the uh, front of the uh, bridge area. I play and dead. you see a face <laughs> uh, on the other side. You see a face on the other side. Uh, and it's a it's a woman who is she has like shoulder length dark hair. Uh, it's wearing one of the um, jumpsuits that you're all wearing, and she has ranking sig the rank insignia on her uh, clothing that says that she is the XO of this uh, of this crew. Uh, and she says, "Ah, hello. I am Karen Glover." Um, you have been quite the thorn in our side, and I'm going to need all of you to come join me down in engineering so we can have a better talk about all of this. I think once you see what we have to offer, you'll realize that there's nothing to be afraid of. And that is where we're going to leave it, because it's midnight. Yay! Uh, right now, so keep that one in your brains. But... We are going to be closing out here in a minute. Thank you, everybody, for playing and joining. Uh, Can I mention when I keep it together before we leave? Yeah, please do. Oh, I got three successes. You're fine. Good to go. Um, and then we'll we'll pick up with oh, Karen. Creepy. I love uh, it. Yeah, we'll pick up with Karen next week on Monday, where we'll figure out what happens at the I'll end of this uh, little adventure. Um, so I hope everybody enjoyed it, uh, and that. Uh, I will be able to see everybody here next week to finish this one out. Does anyone have any questions or comments or anything like to say before we sign out here? All good. Thank you to our generous viewers. Very much we so. We have met our $25 goal for this evening. For the, uh, the fight against the anti-trans bills in Texas. So, yay! If, yay! Uh, I'm going to put it out there as a challenge. Next week, if we hit our goal, I'll go on ahead and sing an a cappella song of <laughs> the chat's choice. Oh, Perfect. here we go. I'll put my own money down if it comes to that. There we go. Hey, man. <laughs> okay. getting there is getting there doesn't matter how um, that's right Well, uh, thank you everybody for joining us here on Midnight Monday uh, and uh, I wanted to give everybody an update on the book uh, I have taken this week off to write uh, in the book, more of the book get some things done to make sure that everything's shored up mechanically because that's my job uh, we have some wonderful writers that we have brought on to help us get it over the finish line and reading what they have written makes me very happy because not only does it mean things are getting finished, it means they're being finished very well. And uh, we have a, I don't have, we don't have a release date yet, but we, uh, our writing deadline is like June 1st. So by June 1st, we should be done with all the preliminary writing. And at that point, it's in the hands of an editor. And I will have continuous updates here as we get closer. So, Exciting. from everybody yes. here at 
Um, uh, well, I guess uh, the Nat 30s and the Compound and the Midnight World. Thank you for joining us. I hope to see you again next week. And uh, until then, stay safe. We're gonna go raid Loaded Dice Adventures. Yay! Nineties freeze frame. Ah. <laughs> 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 My love's back up. <laughs> good. Just the. Uh,